Kaiki and how's kan yoloa? That means hello everyone and Merry Christmas in Finn. And today we're going to be making Finnish pula bread. And so let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with um, scalding some milk and then adding the butter. So the maito ya boita. We're going to start with that first. So maito is milk, boita is butter and what I do is I scald my milk in the microwave. You can scald it on the stove, uh, that's traditionally how you do it, but uh, I just find that this works best for me to just throw it in the microwave for three minutes. So that will get nice and boiling hot um, and then you're going to add your uh, white, uh, your, um, your butter. And so um, I'm just going to let that go and then we're going to add the butter and we're just going to let that sit and then we're going to let that sit until um, the uh, temperature of the milk comes back down to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, if you're using instant yeast you can have the um, temperature of that milk stay a little higher but I traditionally just bring it down to about 110. So if you leave it for about a half an hour on the counter, then that should come down to about a, between 100 and 100, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so my milk has done, uh, I've scalded the milk in the microwave for three minutes. You can see it's steaming hot. And I'm just gonna pour that over my butter. And I'm just gonna give that a stir. And then now I'm just gonna leave that for you know 20 minutes to half an hour. Uh, the butter will cool the milk and um, but you do want to bring that temperature down because if you started to add your ingredients in there right now your yeast would would die because it's too hot so we have to bring it down to about I, like I said 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if you don't have a thermometer then you can always just use your um, your uh, stick your finger in the maito ya boita and feel the um, uh, temperature and if it feels like it's room temperature then then that that'll be fine. Okay, so I have my thermometer and it's been cooling for about 15 minutes. So I'm just going to stick my thermometer in there and see what the temperature is. And it is. I have to turn it this way for me to read it. It's at 100 and 110. Actually, it's a little bit warmer than that. So I still need to cool that a little bit more. And actually, my temperature was more like 118. Now, when you microwave milk, when you microwave milk, there's hot spots in that milk. So make sure that you give it a stir. You see, all the butter has melted, and that's good. And I'm just going to take another read on that now. And yeah, that's at 100 and 113. So that's okay. Um, that's a little bit warmer, but I know that once I add my milk and, or sorry, my, add my eggs and my sugar, it's going to cool down even further. So we're going to start by adding the sugar or socarilla. Socarilla. Give that a stir. And then you, I add three eggs to my uh, polar bread. And so I have got these beautiful eggs from a friend of mine. Uh, just gorgeous. She just dropped them off. I just have to show off the beautiful colors and so I'm going to add three of the eggs munat um, so I'm just going to add three of those right into the bowl One. two and I'll take this large one here too Legs. And then I just burst the yolks and whisk it up. 
I've been making this pool of bread for many, many years. And I have a KitchenAid stand mixer, and certainly I could make use the dough hook and make the bread using that, but I like making this by hand. So really all you need is one bowl for mixing everything up there. I'm just gonna take that off of there. So my eggs are in there, my sugar, and now you're gonna add your spice. Now the spice for pula bread is cardamom. And I like a generous amount of cardamom in my pula bread. Now I use between two and a half to three tablespoons of ground cardamom. Cardamom. So there's one. That's a half. And I'll just do one more. And there's all kinds of variations on the amount of cardamom that you're going to put in, that you can put in pula bread, but uh, I like to use a lot. So there's my two and a half tablespoons. Now you're going to stir that up. And don't worry about the color of this. Once you put in all the flour, then you're going to, it's going to look like bread, um, just with traces of the cardamom. Now, you can use um, instant yeast, which is what I have here, two tablespoons, or if you have traditional yeast, you proof it. So you put that, you'd add some water to this, a uh, quarter cup to a half a cup of water and a tablespoon of sugar, and let that sit for 10 minutes before you add it to your mixture. And that just activates the yeast. Now, instant yeast, you don't have to do that, so uh, that's what I have, so I'm just going to use that. And uh, yeast in thin is heva. So we're gonna add that now. We're gonna give that a little stir. And you can see that it's already starting to bubble a little bit, which is good. Now there are only two more ingredients, two uh, additional ingredients to add. Your salt, which you're not going to add right away because yeast doesn't really like a salty environment. So you're going to start adding your flour first and then you're going to mix in your salt after you've mixed in some of your flour. So, and uh, flour and thin is yao hot. And then, so now we're going to add the flour. And we're going to add seven cups of flour. And, but I start with six because it depends on the humidity of your house. It depends on your flour. You, you know, you, your, if your flour has some humidity in it, you might not need quite seven and a quarter cups, which is what my recipe says. So um, we're going to start by adding in six cups. Okay, so I'm going to use this bit now to just stir it in. And I know I'm going to have to add more flour, but I'm going to stir my flour down. And a traditional <laughs> Finlander would probably just use a wooden spoon for this. So if you have a wooden spoon, then use that. Okay, so that's stirred up enough. Now I can add my salt. So I'm going to add two teaspoons of salt. And this is my recipe to add two teaspoons of salt. If you want to add less, you can. Um, you can add just one teaspoon of salt, but I always add two teaspoons of salt. And then I stir that up. And now I'm going to add the rest of my flour. Probably I need just about one and a quarter. If you had proofed your yeast, then you're going to be adding more liquid to this dough so you might have to add a little bit more. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the rest by hand. Okay, so I'm just going to start mixing that. And I can tell that it's going to need a little bit more water. It's, it's slightly tacky right now. And, and now you don't want this to be dry, so it's okay to, for it to be a little bit tacky, but not really tacky. So I just uh, dusted it with flour. And you want the dough to come away from the side of the bowl as you need it. And so I'm just going to knead this dough now for about five minutes and add flour if I need it. So I just need a little bit here. And you need the dough to activate the, glute, the gluten. So just keep doing that. And you definitely don't want it to be too dry. So if it's a little bit tacky, that's, that's how it should be. This is a sweet dough. And that's what you want. Now we're going to let that rise after we finish kneading it. We're going to let it rise for two hours. That's typically how long I do. I let it rise. And I already have a bowl that I just greased with butter. And I'm just going to roll the dough in that bowl. And then cover it with a tea towel and I'll put it in a warm place to rise. I happen to be cooking my turkey today and so it's a perfect day for me to be making some pula bread because the house is warm, the kitchen is warm so this should rise nice. I'm just putting a little bit on that just so that my hands don't stick too much to it. But you see I'm not putting a ton because as you start working the dough, the, the dough becomes less sticky. And so bear with <laughs> while you start eating it because it might seem like you need to add a lot of flour, but you don't. Now, pula bread is a sweet bread, like I said, and it is a dense bread. It's not light and airy. And so I can tell it's really starting to come together but I'm going to put a little bit of flour in the bottom there not much just so that I can work it a little bit more now I've seen recipes out there where people rise their pool of bread twice or the, their dough twice before braiding it I find that I have good success by just letting it rise for two hours in that first rise and then braiding it and letting that rise. Okay, okay that's, that's feeling good. Okay, now I'm just going to grab my bowl that's buttered. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your your bowl, your your dough, and see how it's it's starting to come away from my my hands. It's still tacky, but it's it, it's coming away. So that's that's what you want. So now I rub, just run the the dough ball in in the butter, and then now it's going to be nice and soft on that side while it rises and I'll just put that um, put a cover over that and let that rise for two hours okay so if you are having trouble um, kneading your dough um, and it was really sticking to your hands and you're tempted to put a lot more flour in it don't do that um, knead your dough as much as you can and then um, just take the dough ball and just run it through like just roll it around in the buttered bowl and then let it sit for um, you know a, a couple minutes, two or three minutes, and then it'll soften. And then you can get in there and really knead the dough. And you know there's butter on that outside, so you see how it's just not sticking to my hands. And so you can really work the dough then. And so um, finish your knead that way, 
and then you will have no trouble. So after you've done that, then just make sure that you take your dough ball out and add more butter to the bottom because you don't you want to um, put that on the top of the dough ball again to soften it so that it'll rise and not dry out. So just roll that dough ball again around in the butter and then just set it to rise. Okay, so I just took my turkey out of the oven and so it's my turkey was in there for four hours so it's nice and warm in my kitchen and so this has been rising for one hour and look how much it's risen already. Now if it's cooler in your kitchen then it might take longer to rise um, but like I said it's very warm in my kitchen so it's perfect day for baking bread and so I, I'm going to rise it for another half hour and then I will punch it down and uh, form the braids. Okay so because my kitchen is nice and warm at 23 degrees celsius um, my dough rose really nicely um, in an hour and a half and so um, this is this is good enough I don't need to go two hours and you know sometimes my dough doesn't rise this much and that's okay it's it'll still turn out but you know a test to see that your your dough is, is rising really nicely and ready to um, use as it springs back um, after you press uh, press in so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just punch that down and just gently because I don't want to really lose a lot of the air in the dough so I'll just kind of turn it over like this and um, then what I do is I take it out of the bowl and I divide this dough ball into three and that's approximate so I'll just use a knife and cut that and then I'll see what I what the dough balls look like if I break them or roll them into and this one's quite a lot larger so I'm just going to take some of that off there and so now I have my three dough balls. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll those now into, um, into braids. So now you're going to take each dough ball and you're going to divide that now in three. So again just rough it into balls and then you'll be able to see for feel by feel that you know you need to kind of divide it up a little bit and you know it's okay if it's not perfect perfectly divided but close is good so there's my three dough balls off of the one section and now what I like to do is I just use uh, my baking sheet as a guide and I just form each of those dough balls into ropes so I give it a squeeze sometimes there's a, a good amount of air in there and so you know give it a squeeze and then just start rolling it and if you're if your baking sheet is moving around then just put a towel underneath it and it'll it'll move less so I also have a pastry board, but I, I've been making pula bread for so long that this is how I used to make it. And I still make it this way without the pastry board. I just use my baking sheet. And it's the dough, you don't need to, you don't want to put any flour down because if you put flour down, you're going to dry out those braids. And so a nice Teflon or non-stick baking sheet is perfect for doing this and so I roll it until the braid or until the rope is about approximately as long as this baking sheet and now what I'm doing is I'm just lightly touching 
the rope. I'm not pressing down too much. Um, you don't need to. Okay, so there's there's my one row, and now I'm gonna make my other. And I'll start pulling that as well. And the reason why you want to break out those air pockets that are bubbles in your braids is that as it bakes, you don't want to end up with a hole in your bread if you can help it. So this doesn't take long to do. And I'm going to do this for all three dough balls. And I'm going to rise them all at the same time. And I bake them at the same time too. And I'll show you how I do that. And then the last one. This, is, this doesn't get in the way. So I've lined another baking sheet with parchment paper. And I love using parchment paper because then it kind of saves my baking sheets and I don't have to scrape off anything that bakes right on. And you're going to brush these braided loaves with an egg wash and that egg wash will drip down. And if you put that loaf right on your baking sheet without any parchment paper, it, it's going to likely stick a bit and that will burn, that egg wash will burn onto the pan. So yeah, it's really ideal to line your baking sheets with parchment paper. So I'm trying to get as uniform as I can, um, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we're ready to braid. So then this is really simple. I just turn my sheets that I have the longest side or long, longest angle and I just just pinch the tops. You're going to roll that under so don't worry too much about if it's not quite tight. Now you want to braid your um, your loaves tight. Not stretch the dough but make sure it's close because if you don't do that then your braids might break apart. Pinch at the end and then just turn it under and then I just turn that under like that and that's our first loaf. So I'm going to put that on this baking sheet like that in the center and now I'm going to do the same for the other two. Okay, so the, I've braided all three of my loaves and you can see the spacing that I have um, between the loaves. Um, when I put them in the oven, I just uh, bring this sheet over top of this one so that I can fit all three in the oven at the same time. And this, I know from experience that these breads won't rise past this part or spread past, past that edge. So now what you want to do is put a towel clean tea towel over top of your bread so it doesn't dry off the dough so it doesn't dry out and you're going to let that sit for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I usually put my bread in if it's rising really well at about 45 minutes because you want the, fin the, the rise to finish in your oven and you're going to bake these at 375 degrees Fahrenheit so at um, about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, I, um, I preheat my oven and, and my, my cat has come to check out what's happening. <laughs> but I guess it wasn't that exciting. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes. My oven is uh, preheated. Um, now you can see that it's risen nicely. I didn't tight, uh, tuck this quite tightly, so I can tell that this braid is going to unravel, so I should have really tucked it under, but it'll still taste good. So now I, I took the egg yolks, I put about um, a half a teaspoon of water, and I just mixed it up, so I, so I made an egg wash, and you're going to now just brush your loaves with the egg wash. And don't worry about it if it drips on the bottom of the uh, parchment paper and you want to get into all the crevices but don't press too hard you don't want to 
um, actually destroy the the braid so just you know brush it over top lightly like I said that braid is going to come undone when it cooks but that's okay and so what you're going to do is brush all of the the loaves and then you're going to sprinkle with sugar you know I usually only use about a tablespoon of sugar for all three loaves because I don't want a lot of sugar on the top of my loaves but you can do it to taste however you prefer some people after they're baked and cooled also drizzle some icing on it but um, I don't like it that way I like it with just um, just sugar on the top okay so then you're going to just take your sugar and I just have some in this bowl and I just take my fingers and I just sprinkle it on like that. And if you have coarse sugar, you could use that. You can use turbinado if you want, or you could use pearl sugar as well. But I just use regular granulated sugar on the top of my pool of bread. Okay, so now we're going to put that in the oven and we're going to bake it for um, about 35 minutes at um, 375 until they're nice and golden brown. Okay, so the pull of bread is done. So I just transfer that over to a wire rack to cool. Okay, so the pula bread is done and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It's a nice golden brown on the top and it just smells so amazing. I just love cardamom in bread. And so um, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you do try making the pula bread. It's um, fantastic and you know in this house we eat pula for um, breakfast, uh, lunch and dinner once we make it. And so um, don't be intimidated by the fact that there are three loaves here because they will go fast. So I hope that uh, if you really are enjoying the videos at the YouTube channel that you subscribe and that you do have a chance to go to cansanity.com and check out all the other recipes that are there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a great day.